Welcome to the Tandem Talk Show, where we help women dial in their nutrition and fitness so that they can lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And now your host from Tandem Nutrition, Coach G. Yo, hey, what's up, everyone? Coach G here with a brand new episode of the Tandem Talk Show. This is episode 51, and I could not be more excited for this brand new episode, giving you more value on how to lose fat, tone up, and transform your lives in a healthy and sustainable way. If you're new here at, at the Tandem Talk Show uh, and you want to be a member of our Facebook group where all these episodes stream live every Thursday at 2 p.m., go to www.tandemnutrition.com forward slash Facebook to get access to this and all our episodes uh, within our podcast. Now, as you know, here at Tandem Nutrition, we specialize in helping women lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And to help those listening and our audience better achieve their goals, I've invited a very special guest and close friend of mine to join me on today's episode. And before I let him introduce himself, I just want to say that I'm truly, truly honored uh, to have him on as a guest. This is a special treat for me. Um, I'm almost kind of selfishly doing this for myself. And despite the fact that we'll be talking about holiday survival strategies to help you lose fat... Nate is going to give you a bunch of awesome value from his experience working with hundreds of people around the world. But Nate, uh, Nate, before I introduce him fully, or actually before I have him introduce himself, I want to let you know the guest we have on, his name is Nate Palmer. And Nate is the owner of Nate Training Systems, and he is the best-selling author of, get this, not one, but two amazing books, and they have blown up on Amazon. He's written articles for pretty much every fitness and nutrition site there is on the internet, which is outstanding. And um, what he does, essentially, he specializes in helping high performers and entrepreneurs create energy focus in a lean and healthy body. So without further ado, Nate, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me on the show. I've been really looking forward to this, Garrett. Oh man, dude, it's it's a real pleasure. I've been, you know, for those listening, I've been knowing Nate for the past three or four years. And it's just, and in fact, I say this on the side note, but Nate was one of my first mentors as we sort of grow tainted nutrition. So Nate has a special place in my heart. And again, I'm just honored to have him on the podcast today to give you value um, on what he knows best as far as losing fat, toning up, and getting the best shape of your life. But before we get into that, Nate, tell us a little, tell us a little about yourself and uh, how you got to where you're at today. Awesome, man. Yeah. So I've been uh, basically in fitness for about 12 or 13 years. I started off as a personal trainer in 2008, working at a big box gym. Um, I really liked training. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do when I grew up. I still don't quite know, but uh, so I liked that so much that I quit that job and I started my own personal training studio. And that was amazing. Learned a lot. Was working with some like some really great people, like help mentor me in some like fizzy, like physio type of work, doing a lot of stretching, working with golfers, had an incredible business that was just like absolutely just blown up. So like that so much, sold the business, moved to Seattle without a job with my wife, where I started working at a gym up there called Pro Sports Club, which was amazing. This place is like 500,000 square feet, seven different basketball courts, like 14 pools, med spa, auto spa, like dry cleaner, florist. This place was bonkers, 150 wow. plus trainers. And I loved it. There's huge focus on like continuing education. Like I still credit so much of what I know about like nutrition, especially and like diabetes and some of these other like hypertension, stuff like that to them. So I love that so much that we, we quit that job too. Um, my wife and I sold all of our stuff and we moved to South America for about a year. What? And I was like, I know that. yeah, that's what uh, passport fitness is all based on. And so like all the stories in there of me, like catching crocodiles and potentially almost getting stabbed at the park one time. So <laughs> that's a little, that's a little teaser for you. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's kind of where I launched my online fitness business. And I was like, you know what? I'm an amazing personal trainer. And I can say that without any ego. I'm really good at it. Yeah. So I was like, you know what I'm going to be good at? Online coaching. And guess what I was bad at? Online coaching. So 2015, I'm shipping off Excel documents to people being like, why didn't you do your workouts? What's wrong with you? You know? And uh, you know, I was like, oh, you know what it is? They didn't do it because I didn't have any videos in there. I got to film some videos. So I filmed like 350 videos. Like, okay, got it. I got it figured out. I'm nailing it. So now I'm like, yeah, hey, here's, your, here's your workouts. By the way, click it, video links. I spent hours doing this, Garrett, so long. And that didn't help either. 
Wow. <laughs> so like in 20, like 2016, we get back to the States, move back to Arizona. 2018, I'm at my first, my firstborn, and my daughter, Rena. And I start working with some like just more dads and some entrepreneurs and, and people who are like building businesses kind of in that, that mindset. And I was like, like, what is it that is going to get these people to like get the results? How do we connect what they want with what they should be doing? Because everyone knows mm. we should be eating salads and not burgers. But how do we make that happen on a regular basis? Mm. So it really kind of clicked for me one day when a client of mine, Jason, he's building a roofing business in, in Arizona. He's like, yo, I got about 40 pounds to lose. I'm not going to train. I don't have time. I'm going to drive around 12 to 14 hours per day in my truck. I'm going to eat fast food five times per week. And I, and I'm right now I'm currently crushing three energy drinks after 2 PM every single day. And when I get home, I have no energy for my family. And I was like, okay. And he's like, what can you do for me? And I was like, well, let's <laughs> like, let's see. So we kind of went back to the drawing board. Now we just pulled everything out of his life and pull, like kind of play with it a little bit. And I was like, okay, here's what you're having for breakfast. Here's how to eat lunch on the road. Here's like 17 different options. You can go to these restaurants. Here's what you chef for dinner. Let's go see how it goes. So fast forward like two months. He's like, oh my gosh. My energy is incredible. I've cut way back on my energy drinks. I get home and I have this energy for my wife. I'm playing with my four kids, feeling so good. And I'm like, dude, that's incredible. Like, what great news. And he's like, oh, yeah. I also lost 22 pounds in the last two what? months. What? That's I insane. Like, Excuse me? Like, that's bonkers, right? And I was like, I think we might be on to something here. So at that point, I kind of shifted all my attention towards this, like the nutrition, the habits, the lifestyle, because that's the thing that seems to be getting people the results long term and having the right mm. mentality around those things helped lead him and countless other people to success because now no longer is it like, hey, here's an end date. Like you hit your, you ran your 5k. Now you can go back to normal life. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's a, here's how ongoing focus on your nutrition and, and training can help you achieve some magnificent goals as a dad, as a business owner, as a, as like a partner in your relationships, as a parent, like as all these things, when we connect what you actually care about for, for most people, it's not their angle on a Romanian deadlift, right? It's not their mm -hmm. hit. Like it's not with how their Bulgarian split squat looks and feels. It's these other things. It's their financial success. It's their relationships. It's how they look in the mirror in the morning. And if we can connect those things with that salad or whatever it is mm -hmm. so much easier to stay on tracks and, and push through stuff. Wow. Wow. I love that. I love how you connected with that, uh, the mental and the meaning, meaningful part of your client's life and, and really from there transformed his habits and his lifestyle to help like literally transform his life, lose 22 pounds, have more energy, more time with his family. Um, that that's absolutely amazing. Nate. I, I love that story. And, um, with his, I mean, you have, you have helped hundreds of people, thousands of people transform their lives. And like you had told me too, I'm kind of curious, you wrote, you wrote, you written two books, uh, two bestsellers. What is just out of curiosity, what is your, the next big project or achievement you're working towards? Uh, there's not like a, like a big, like, like looming goal or achievement that I have right now. I feel like well, like everything is everything that I'm doing is, is kind of focused on refinement at the moment. Like, so this is just like a personal thing, right? Um, I'm a very chaotic individual. I'm really, really good at going like full steam into stuff. Like I wrote, like I wrote Passport Fitness based off of a product that I had called Bod in a Box before I had realized what people needed. So Bod in a Box was this. I was, I was bringing in products. I had a suspension trainer. I had bands. I had sliders. Then I, again, well, I couldn't get away from it. I had to do my video workouts, got it like wrote all these workouts, dozens of them, so many workouts beginning to advance, like, and everything in between. And so like, that's kind of was like what I was talking about in here. It was like, Hey, here's how to get a good workout in on the road, wherever you're at, no problem. And what I was finding with like, with just like going full steam into something is that I wasn't asking the right questions of people. I wasn't mm. asking like, what do you need? What are you looking for? What do you want? And that's one thing I love about you and Tandem Nutrition is that you're helping women lose weight, tone up, and transform their lives. You're not just like, hey, here's the finish line. Here's the, here's the end date. You're actually giving people what they need long term. Because mm. like I tell a lot of my clients this, and this is not a popular thing to say, but like your results don't really matter if you cannot sustain them. If I so give good. you tilapia yes. and broccoli for the next 30 days, you're going to lose weight. You're going to hate me. And then you're going to relapse. But the thing I love about you, what you do is that you teach people sustainable habits. How do you have maintenance phases? How do you get like, how do you set your mind correctly? How do you deal with the holidays? And that is so much more valuable than any five pounds on the scale. 
Wow. I'm already blown away by this episode. Guys, if you're watching this right now and that last statement that Nate said about your results really don't matter, you know, especially if you're not able to keep them, comment something in the <laughs> – make a comment in the below in the comments. Let us know you're tuning in live because we're about to get into some really heavy and viable things. I, I know for sure you're going to take home and uh, apply and get some amazing results. I want to piggyback off the last thing you said, Nate, and that was essentially – staying in shape throughout the holidays. And that's what I'd love for this episode today to be about, specifically how to stay on track, still lose fat throughout the holidays. But the very first question I want to ask you is, and I ask this because a lot of my clients have come to me with this question. And I'm not sure if your clients have asked you the same thing, but what are your thoughts on dieting throughout the holidays? Do you feel clients, do you think, do you feel that people should be dieting throughout the holidays? That's a great question. And I think the like the really easy like fitness pro answer here is, yeah, it depends, you know, kind of like just like let me just let me just defer that to the side because it's a hard question to answer. And the answer is also not the same for every single person. Like like so, if, for example, I had a client come to me with this question like, hey, I've been dieting for the last six months. I've been I've been working hard since June to get this off. Like and I'm feeling like I'm plateaued. I'm a little bit burning out. Should, like should I like how do I how do I like avoid the 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 Thanksgiving weight or like, how do I eat around Thanksgiving? And I was like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Yeah. What we want to do is want to get your, get you to maintenance. We want to like, your goal right now is not to lose weight or drop fat or anything like that. Your goal is to maintain through the holidays. It's to learn some valuable skills to figure out how to enjoy life, break bread with people that you love, yeah. have like, have those times, which are really special. And the fitness, the fitness pro who's going to say food is only fuel doesn't have a good relationship with their family. You know, like, like we've been breaking bread with people for like thousands and thousands of years. It's a, it's yes. a way we show love, you know, Yes, absolutely. especially if you come from like a big family, maybe your mom's like that, but like, so some of us, we like the, the big win here is not, I dropped three pounds during the holidays. The big win was I had an amazing time. I really focused on what was important and I maintained, mm -hmm. I learned how to maintain. I think mm -hmm. that can be for a lot of us, the bigger win. I try to like, mm -hmm. I, I say this a lot to my clients is that maintenance is progress. Yes. It's not, it's yes. not stalling. Maintenance is progress. It, it's so great to, that my audience, that this audience listening to us right now can hear that from someone besides me. Cause I feel like I said all the time and I feel like I'm almost like a, a sounding board where it's just, it, it's not received anymore. But I love the fact that you said maintenance is progress because that is absolutely true. And, and even more so, how someone's decision to diet or not to diet throughout the throughout the holidays could be completely and should be completely individ, uh, customized to them based upon their own fat loss journey. You know how long they've been dieting, what their goals are, and I agree, it's so important to visit people, not just visit food, right? And and to make those relationships, spend time with your loved ones, and to focus on winning through relationships, through conversations, and but also as you mentioned, by maintaining your body weight as well. It's a lifestyle gains too, you know, like it's not all about like the physical gains, you know, like we, you, if you have a six pack and, and zero love in your life, are you really winning? You know? Absolutely. Yeah. But let's take someone who decides, let's say they have been maybe on maintenance for the past 12, 16 weeks and they are perhaps eager to start a next fat loss phase and they're excited. They're motivated. They know the next 43 days are coming up of 2021 and they decide to start a fat loss phase right before Thanksgiving. Let's chat about some advice that you know you would give them to help them stay on track, still lose fat without making, uh, without reversing their progress throughout their journey. What's what's one piece of advice that you would give them, Nate? This is a yeah, great question because I do have I've got some clients who are brand new starting off. They're like, hey, let's go on a really ramp up before 2022. And in that case, yes, it's time to do a diet phase during the holidays. And props to anyone who's like doing that, who's like sitting down yeah. and be like, this is the decision I want to make. Because I think that like, that's just, it's just going to require a little bit more effort than, you know, something like maybe my in January when everything's kind of geared towards new year's resolutions. Yeah. But then again, like never, life is never like, it's never a right time. It's never a perfect time. You're never going to have okay. all this great time to be able to do it. So if, if it feels like the right time, do it right now. And if that is the case, what I like to think about is, is how do we do two things? How do we use the food that we're eating to build muscle, to like create, to grow, to improve? And how do we install um, like 
safety mechanisms, safety nets, or like insurance policies as a way of keeping like mitigating damage. And I hate to even use the word like damage because I don't, I don't like to be like, oh, food is bad. And if you have a dinner rolls, then you are naughty list, you know? But I also like, you know, want to like, I think that's realistic too. So number one is making sure you're hitting your workouts. Okay. Mm. Utilize those workouts as a way of building muscle as growing. If you're going to be eating more on Thanksgiving, and most of us are probably going to be eating a little over maintenance on Thanksgiving, hit your workouts in the morning. Make sure that whole week you've been running up, working out a little bit harder. And then grab the family afterwards. Take them all on a walk, right? There's this, pian- this uh, p- pianist. Can I say pianist on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> You can say that. Yeah. Oh man, I'm a I am an 11 year old at heart. So. <laughs> um, but this is pianist. Uh, I think his name's Michael Boyd. I forget. But okay. he does this thing where he is like, okay, I don't have an album written. My album will be written in April, and it's going to come out on April 3rd. And he announces this on all of his social medias. He goes, everybody, hey everyone, my album's coming out. And they're like, cool, have you written it yet? He's like, not even a little bit. So he creates this public accountability. And Mm -hmm. says like, hey, here's what I'm up to. And you and he books the time he hires, he pays the money, puts the money down and says, I'm doing this thing. So two things there that he does that keeps him from like keeps him being prolific. He keeps coming out with new albums all the time. He's just he's everywhere. But he creates public accountability. So the same thing we can do with our friends and family. Hey, guys, Mm -hmm. I'm working really hard this this season on gain on dropping some fat, being healthy, living my best life, getting really lean. Who wants to come on a walk with me? So you've created that public accountability and you brought other people in. We all rise up together, right? A rising tide lifts all ships. The second thing is he puts money down. He hires that. He hires the coach. He gets the nutritionist. He gets someone who can help him out. And one of the things that he does is he books studio time, which is really, really expensive. You can't miss it. Same thing. You get a, you get a coach, someone who's like, Hey, I'm gonna hold you accountable. You said you were going to accomplish this. How did it go? So creating that, like that top down accountability from my like coaching, creating that lateral accountability from friends and family, your peer group, both great ways to make sure that you are showcasing and, and, uh, actually doing the things you say you're going to do. Because one thing as humans that we despise in ourselves and everyone else is hypocrisy. We don't mm-hmm. want to see someone say one thing and do the other, especially mm-hmm. not ourselves. So I think that's a really great way to make sure that you're on, on point from like a, a training perspective, from like a, the gain perspective. Man, so much wisdom, and I I am learning so much myself throughout this episode so far. So I'm excited to ask you a few more questions. But I agree, your know, training is so important. Being active, getting in steps, and I love how you include your family afterwards and say, "Hey, listen, let's go on a walk together. Let's burn some more calories, and let's just spend that time together, and not just focus on food." And another perspective I have, you know, is you know we have 43 days left of the year. So 43 days left of the year. And of those 43 days, only two days are designated holidays, right? So like those are two days that like we're going to be really challenged to like to not overeat, even though it's okay to overeat, especially on Thanksgiving. There's nothing wrong with eating more than your body needs at that moment. And so when someone says, hey, should I be dieting? And if they say, yes, I want to diet, you have 41 other days that you can be really, you know, pretty strict, and especially with different strategies, such as the calorie barring strategy we use here at Tandem with our clients, you can essentially save up calories on some days, kind of like, like what you mentioned about workouts, working out really hard the morning of, the few days before, and really creating that need for more energy. So when you do go in there and work out, that you are you know, making the most of that situation. And when you go and eat, you're like, hey, I need this for storage, for recovery. You grow, you'll grow more muscle mass. You have a fast metabolism. and Plus, I don't know about you uh, and everyone listening, but when I work out and when I know I, I put that time into workout and to exercise, I'm more likely to stay somewhat focused uh, throughout my eating times versus going out on an all out binge and like, hey, I, I, everything's lost. I haven't exercised in a week. Might as well just continue this path. But I love your focus. Love your um, your thoughts there, Nate. And yeah, for anyone thanks. listening, yeah, for anyone listening, I'd love to hear. Drop in the comments below. Let us know throughout this holiday season if you plan to diet. Uh, just comment yes or no if you plan to diet. We'd love to hear who is planning to go throughout the rest of this year in fat loss, uh, losing fat, or who's just going throughout with maintenance. But one other question I had, Nate, was one of the biggest challenges that I see many people having throughout holidays, especially social settings, um, are those you know food pushers. 
like someone saying, Hey, you know, um, you know, you know, give me an example of like, you know, why, uh, why are you eating this? So-and-so or like, aren't you going to have this drink? And so it kind of influencing our behaviors to be outside of what we see as aligned with our goals. How, how would you help a client deal with this if they are wanting to lose fat, but still maintain a healthy and positive relationship with their friends? <laughs> okay. You, you lost me in healthy and positive relationships. I was like, I was like, all right, here's what you do. You draw a line in the sand. You're like, Aunt Gertrude, get out of here with that apple pie. I'm not eating another slice. You know, I'm just kidding. Don't do that, though. <laughs> you you want to stay on Aunt Gertrude's good side. You know how she gets. That's true. A couple, couple eggnog cocktails. <laughs> so in, in that case, like, because I think you're right, like, especially like people who are kind of fall into that, like, a little more like servant minded. I feel like I see a lot. This is like a lot of moms and women uh, who are like, feel that kind of guilt, like, Oh, so-and-so brought food and I didn't eat it. Or I didn't try everyone's like stuff that, that they brought to the potluck. And so here's a couple different ways to, that I like to help my clients navigate these sorts of things. Number one is carry something with you. Always have something in your hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a little glass of just like soda water, sparkling water, something like that, like no one's going to really bother you about a drink. So like, that's like, that's an easy thing to do that. Like we honestly, we shouldn't have to do that. Like people shouldn't be pushing drinks on you anyways, but that's not realistic. That's not life. So especially Aunt Gertrude, we already talked about her. You know what she's going to say already. So carry just some, some something around with you. That way when you're, when you're someone's like, Hey, you want this? You're like, ah, sorry. I got this cup already drink. Yeah, there you go. Second thing is um, when, like when someone's like, Hey, did you try this apple pie? Here's my go-to line. And this is sounds so like simple, but it's incredibly effective because no one can argue with you. You go, oh, no, thanks. Sugar kind of gives me a headache. So I'm kind of, I'm cutting back. I'm staying, I'm staying from Love that. Sugar gives me a headache. And if you just say that, people can't be like, no, have a headache. You know, like no one's going to say that to you. They're going to be like, oh, okay, <laughs> no big deal. Line. But if you go, hey, I'm on a diet. They're like, you can, you don't have to be on a diet. Look at you. You're so skinny and beautiful. Like, and then it's like this, then it's a conversation we don't really want to get into. Yeah. You know, like, it's not anyone's really business what we're up to with like, with, with that anyway. So, oh no, thanks. That like, like that kind of, that gives me a headache. Oh man, I'm so full right now. Like I'm, I'm good. I'm going to definitely try that a little bit later. Just defer it. Be kind. Oh, and then like, I think internally, you don't have to embody this and like really be like, Hur. but <laughs> like, we got to realize well, what is average? Average is sitting $30,000 in credit card debt. Average is holding on to 22 extra pounds of, of body fat mass that you don't want. Average is gaining eight pounds a year between Thanksgiving and Christmas. These are average. Average is not having bad relationships with your, with your spouse, your partner. Mm. Average is not being like, not being completely in it with your kids. Mm. That's average. And we, everyone who's listening to this podcast right now, I can guarantee you one thing, Garrett, they do not want to be average. They're yeah. striving for more. So remember that when someone's like, Hey, do you want this thing? You go, no, I'm good. Like I'm solvent. Like I'm whole. I don't need anything else. I'm fine without it. And if you need to be a little bit more like, like stand your ground with it, like, don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. You know, I love the, Hey, no sugar gives me a headache. But like that third time someone's like, Hey, why don't you try my mashed potatoes? You'd be like, listen, I'm good. Thank you. You know, and yeah. like, and just being confident enough in mm. yourself and who you are and what you want out of, out of your life to say, no, thanks. I'm fine the way I am. I don't need X, Y, or Z thing. Mm. Ben, that is so good. I've never heard the response of, Hey, sugar gives me a headache. And you're right. No one's going to like, want to push you to have this. No one wants you to have a headache. That is absolutely brilliant. Nate, I had no idea. You, I, I know that this episode would be like fire, right? I never really, I really knew it would be, but not. So anyone watching this, I know is getting a ton of, I cannot wait for this to be released. I really cannot wait. I would, um, I'd love to hear with anyone else, like what, like what are some strategies that other people are, are using to deal with this? Cause I, that's a strategy. I literally, I stole from a client from Seattle. They were like, I do this all the time. And I'd be like, that's game changer. So absolutely. anyone else throw that in the comments right now. Let's see, let's hear what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if you are looking to diet throughout the holidays and you have one specific or two strategies that you're going to stick to, to help you stay on track, um, avoid um, people who want to push it on you. Let us know. Comment below. We have uh, Viante who says, bam, and Nate is the man. Nate, you have a popular following, of course. Um, and Whitney says, yeah, that is so good. Lindsay gives a high five. So really great advice so far. But hey, we still want to hear what your strategies are. So please comment below. Let us know what's worked for you. And, um, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, growing up, I had a hard time with is I'm, I'm absolutely... Uh, 
it's really hard for me to pull away from cake balls. Like that's besides pancakes, <laughs> that's like my number one thing that's really, 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 really hard for me not to eat at the holidays. And so I remember when I was in high school, I was, I was battling my my eating disorder. And I remember I'd like get fixated on these cake balls. Like, man, I got to have these cake balls. And I remember I did exactly what you did too. Like I'd go work out for like an hour and a half and I would like have these cake balls. And then I realized that after a few days, I'm like, hey, these cake balls – aren't as exciting as they once were because what I did was I just practiced moderation. I had a little bit on one day, I had a little bit the next day. Then over time, these seasonal treats get less exciting. And you know, that's actually one advice I have that I recommend to others. When you're going out to like a buffet or like a holiday feast, don't grab for the foods that you can get any time of the year. Right. Don't grab for the food you can get next uh, next February or next week. Um, you you want to absolutely savor those seasonal treats. And it's OK if it's 500 calories or 800 calories. And I cool, a really cool trick one of my times clients taught me is if you are tracking your calories throughout Thanksgiving or even throughout Christmas. Again, we want you to do what you feel comfortable with. And we understand how a phone could create that separation between you and that social relationship or conversation. But. One thing my friend does, which is, and her name's Tracy, she's an amazing supporter of our team. She's lost over 100 pounds throughout her fat loss journey. One thing she does, yeah, so awesome, Tracy. Uh, one thing she does, and she taught me this, is when she's going to parties or social events, and she and she's very, very, very dedicated to tracking her foods, one of the things that she'll do, which is kind of sneaky and like no one really knows what she's doing, but she grabs her phone but she doesn't, she will not track in the moment of eating. Let's say you're in a buffet area with people, you're in groups of people talking and socializing. She'll grab her phone, she'll bring it in front of her, flip on her camera, snap a picture of her plate, and then put it back in her pocket. And what she does is that night when she gets home, she'll look at her crackers and her maybe cheese ball and her cranberry and ham, and she'll estimate in small portions what she ate. If she goes over, that's okay. Like her commitment to herself was to track every single thing she ate. And so, again, we're not asking you to track everything at Thanksgiving. In fact, that's not what I'd recommend, especially if you want to spend that quality time with your family. But that is a very sly way of doing that if that is something that you want to continue doing throughout the holidays. I like that a lot. I also think that like, you know, if, if you're going to like holiday parties and stuff like that, because obviously like it's not all like no one gains eight pounds on, like you said, like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Sometimes they gain it on Boxing Day too. But like, like, like there's like holiday parties and stuff like that. People drinking, drinking all the time. There's, you know, you're going, you're seeing more people. So if there's a time when you're showing up at a place where you're like, uh, I don't know, it's only going to be like a buffet. It's really just like 19 different types of cheese dip have like a protein shake, have like a healthy little snack before you go. So you don't roll up hungry, right? Same as you don't want to shop hungry. You don't want to end up at a place that has like 47 different types of artichoke dip hungry also, (laughs) because you're gonna be like, I'll try all of them. (laughs) On top of that, like what you said about the holiday treats, that's gold. Yeah. Like pick the seasonal treats that you want. And I love encouraging people to have, just try a little bit of everything. Like yeah. you don't need a, a gigantic scoop, but why don't you taste it? Why don't you have a little bit of here? And then maybe you can go back for seconds of the things you love. And then kind of to your point about cake balls, because who doesn't like cake balls? Dude, so like, good. If like, if everything is off limits to you, if it's like, you can't have cake balls, that's a, that's a naughty food. That's a dirty food. You know, like I hate that label. Yeah, but like, totally. then it's like, why don't you want a cake ball then? You know, like we, I think we are geared towards, I don't know if this is a human thing or an, like an American thing. Americans are just like, don't tell me that I can't have something. <laughs> do it, right? It's, just, it's, it's, where, it's the, that's what we founded the country on. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me what to do. I want to have Thanksgiving with Squanto. <laughs> so like, so rather than being like, Hey, cake balls are off limits. I don't get to eat pie this whole holiday season. Like figure out what do you want? What do you like for me? Brownies. I have to eat brownies. I love them so much. You know, if I could eat brownies right now, I'd be eating one while we're talking. I don't keep them in the office for that reason. But like, rather than being like, oh, I can't have this thing. Think about what you want and then pick a day to have it. Don't yeah. like, don't like what I, one thing I don't like is like the, in the moment, like, I think that it's like the candy bowl mentality where you're like, just mm-hmm. walk past them and you're like, m M&M, and sound good. And you're like, yes. like that, like that's not satisfying. It doesn't like, it's not like great calories, you know, just like, it kind of just leaves you feeling a little bit like empty and like, Oh man, I screwed up again. You know, versus if you go, you know what I love M and M's, I'm going to have them tomorrow night. 
And mm. then you get to enjoy them twice. You can enjoy the anticipation of 24 hours of waiting so for the things. Great. You're like, I'm going to have that thing later. I have a yes. cinnamon. I have ice cream. I'm going to have a, these are like these things that they sell at Costco, just in seasonal. That's like a chocolate wafer with peppermint ice cream, all coated in that. chocolate. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh. Yes, I think so. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just getting all hot and bothered over here thinking about it. <laughs> But if I think that like, hey, listen, I want to have that and I'm going to have it on Saturday night with my wife, like that's going to be a treat we're going to have. Yeah. I get to enjoy it beforehand. I get to enjoy it during. And then it's also like I said I was going to do it and I did it. Like it's a victory for me. I right. get to pat myself on the back for having a treat. Huge mm. win. I, I, I love that. I, I've never heard that before either because there's other angles you can look at that as far as planning ahead, as far as reducing calories beforehand if you wanted to, even putting – that food into my fitness channel if you want to track it beforehand and even with the anticipation knowing that it will gonna it's gonna come so you're you're not restricting it therefore you're less likely to overeat or binge because it's gonna come again too i think a lot of people before they start a diet or before they even have their cheat meal they like to have like a a last supper mentality where like they go in or they go all in i'm like this is the last time i can have this for the holidays i'm gonna go all in really crush ten thousand calories with the m&ms or brownies and trust me, you will not like that food for about six, seven days. And I promise you it'll come back because your cravings are cues and your body will tell you what you need despite you not eating it. And uh, your body is super smart. So I love the idea of planning ahead, almost like making a date with your wife or partner with that food, especially if they like it too. It brings in a lot of special moments together. Yeah. And then it's, and then it's also like, Oh, I don't have to have it now. And like you de like deferred pleasure, I think is one of like the, the key things that I see in people who are successful in every area of life. If you can, if you can say no to something in the moment and ask for something greater later, like you, you're always going to have more success in business, in your relationships. You know, like, I feel like that's a, like this Amazon prime mentality. It's like, it's like watching porn, you know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's shortly satisfying right in the moment. And then it's like, oh, I feel bad about myself. It's like having a handful of M&Ms. If you can be like, no, I'm going to like, I'm going to wait for something better. That's taking place a little bit later. It's creates this, like this pride, this self-esteem where you're like, listen, not only am I a man of my word that I can, I can say something and then I execute on it, but I also don't have to have, I don't have to have like the, the, like, the, the pleasures of the moment. You know, have you heard of that? Like that marshmallow test that I gave kids the different, yep. You know? So like yeah. they track those kids down like 20 years later and the kids who could defer, like, I don't know if you, if you've never heard this story before, basically they said they gave a kid a marshmallow. They said, Hey, you can have this marshmallow right now, or in five minutes, I'll come back. And if you still have that one there, I'll give you two marshmallows. And so the kids who could defer and wait for that second marshmallow were so like, were far and away more successful than their single marshmallow counterparts. Mm. So it's not just, it's not just like food or anything else. It's, it's it's lifestyle it's it's it completely transcends right who you are i love that it's like building that integrity integrity with yourself and that yes. discipline and as and the more often you do that and you stick to your commitments the more often it's going to happen versus the more often that you fail to execute the commitment that you've made for yourself the more often you're going to go back on what you said and so it's either leading down a, uh, a path of success of always sticking to your commitments and achieving greatness and success and your goals are always falling short and not being the best possible version of yourself. Because when, when you're always falling short, then your word means nothing to you or to anyone else. And that's right. a really tough place to be, I think. Yeah. When you've said over and over again, you've opened this loop in your mind of like, hey, I want to get in shape. I want to get the best shape of my life. I want to do my cardio tomorrow. I want to track my food. And you don't do it. You don't do it. You don't do it. You don't do it. Soon you say things and you don't even take it seriously anymore. You're just like, maybe that'll happen, but it's definitely not going to. And like now your word has no value. And like, and like, that's one thing if it's like, oh, someone else doesn't think that you're, you're telling the truth. But when you believe that about yourself internally, that is a really, really hard spot to be. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can build that integrity with yourself first yeah, and so you can true. be to the point where you're like, if I say it, it's happening. You can, mm -hmm. you can set your watch by the fact that I said it's going to happen. Like you are such a more powerful human being for yourself to show up for everyone else in your life that you love. Mm. It's just critical to that long-term success. Mm. How, how, what are some ways that you'd recommend someone building that level of self-integrity? It's, it's all about follow through. It's all about follow through on your, on like on what you say you're going to do. So I think that like going back to your question, like, should you diet during the holidays? Like I would turn that back to whoever asked me and be like, I don't know. Should you, what do you want right now? 
Right. You know, like figuring out, first of all, what you want. So that way you don't just say something frivolous and then break your word to yourself just like on a whim. But you go, okay, no, I've thought it through. I'm going to, I'm going to start something right now. I'm going to track every single day, not Thanksgiving, not Christmas. I'm going to hit my workouts five out of seven days. And then you must execute. And I think this comes down to like, you heard like 75 hard, the, uh, oh, yeah. like the, the program. I'm not mm-hmm. a big fan of it. I think it's, I think it's like stupid. People try to use it as weight loss. I don't think it's for that. But what I love about it is that there's like, he says, like you got to work out one time per day inside at the gym, 45 minutes. And you got to work out one time outside 45 minutes. And I've had clients, I've seen people doing this challenge who are like, it's 1130 at night. I'm getting it in right now because I said I would. And regardless of if that's not like that, that's like smart or not and sleep and workouts and overtraining, whatever else, the fact that like, if you said you were going to get your workout in and you didn't get it in and it's now 8 30 PM and you go, I said, I was going to do it. And I do it any, and you do it anyways, even though you don't feel like it, even though you want to go to sleep, even though X, Y, and Z things are happening. If you go do that thing, regardless of how good the workout is and how much improvement the progress you make, the, the, the amount of esteem that you can put into your bank that you can just count after that is so much more valuable than any mm. of the physical benefits you ever get. So you got to, you got to say what you like, you got to think about what you mean, what you want. You got to commit to the actions and then you got to execute on them come hell or high mm. water. Wow. I love that. That's definitely something that, especially 75 hard. I've, I know a lot of people include my mentor who has, who has done that and it takes a lot of sacrifice. And I, I, I've heard that it builds just so much mental discipline and, and mental hardness too. Uh, I agree with you. I think that um, not the best approach for fat loss because the habits aren't really sustainable um, at least for me. Um, but I, I love the method it teaches to teach people to be more disciplined as well. Yeah. Cause like at the end of the day, like, Lots of different diets can work, right? Lots of different types of training can be effective, but nothing can work if you don't do it, if you're not consistent, right? And I think that's the thing that Andy Frisell is getting at in with the 75 Heart Program. It's not about the specifics. It's about can you make a commitment and execute on that? Exactly. Yeah. So Nate, last two questions here. As someone dies throughout the holidays, and let's say they have a strong why, they have committed to themselves, you're going to they're going to be consistent as possible with their calorie goal. And let's say their training goal, Let, let's say they hit a hard wall, like halfway through, right. They end up, you know, going throughout a series of a few, a few or a week binge or they're overeating and they're having a hard time getting back on track and understanding what to do. What advice would you give to someone who's stuck after trying fat loss and they fall, they, they fall off track and they're not really sure how to get back on track. What would you tell them? I, I really like a binary approach. I like this, like, it's like either on or off because I think that sometimes we can get be like, okay, well, how many grams of protein did I have in my shake? And then do I know if I'm not fat? And like, and we get all tied up in these decisions. We get this fatigue where we're just like, man, I'm just beat up, like thinking about these things, you know? And especially yeah. during the holidays when it's like, well, wh- where's Aunt Myrtle going to sleep? And what are the kids going to, and like, and you just like start thinking about all these things and suddenly you're just like, why am I so tired? I should go lay down, you know? Yeah. So I love a, I love a, uh, like a challenge or a step that doesn't require a lot of thought. And so Mm. for me, one thing that I love to put on my clients, and I don't know if this is a strategy that you use at all with, with yours, but I love a 24 hour fast. Mm. So basically what it would be like, is if like you stopped eating like on Tuesday night, like after dinner and then you ate again on Wednesday night. So you spent 24 hours not eating. And I like this because it's a, it's a, it's a single action that, like kind of produces the same mental shift that like 75 hard is looking for. It's like, Mm. I said it, I did it. I executed. I like, I withheld myself from like the carnal pleasures of food or cravings that I was getting. And like, like I did it, I did a good job. Like I can move on now. So it's powerful Mm. because a caloric restriction, you cut out 24 hours of food. That's 17% of your weekly food. So great. Nice job there. It's a insurance policy. Like we talked about earlier, but more than that, it's like, it provides a buffer. Like it's like a, it's like a, it's a stop gap. Mm. It's like, okay, I didn't eat on Wednesday. It gives you enough space to take that breath and be like, okay, I'm back at it. I'm good. I'm good to go now. I'm kind of back. Like, so I love a, like a hard reset. So yeah. like fasting can do that. And then I think of like uh, fat loss and phases too. So a lot of times people like, you know, will be off the wagon for a while and they just need a hard reset. And so I think of like the first phase of fat loss is always that like, Let's get in. Let's get really hardcore with it. And then we can back up and, and decrease the intensity as we go. So like, I always think about this, like, so I was told you about the gym I worked at in Seattle. Mm-hmm. I had an interview for them. The interview was, interview was five hours long. 
Whoa. Is wow. that is that not bonkers? <clears throat> That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Is yeah, it was like completely like completely insane. Probably way like overkill. But the reason the reason they did it, I found out later, was that like if they didn't impress upon personal trainers like the importance and the seriousness of their position, if they if they were like, Yeah, you can start audience here, start training people, it's gonna be fun, and stuff like that. If they didn't start off with like the most hardcore approach. Like all you do after you get a job or after you start something new is you kind of shift down and you get a little bit more lax in it, right? So if you start off here, you have a really, like you can you're gonna fall faster. If you start off here, you're gonna like you have a lot like longer path before you get down to that like really lax time in your mm, in your in your business, in your life, and your, your nutrition. Yeah. So having a hardcore reset, I think is very effective for a lot of people from a mental like mentally because they they able, able to go, okay, I did it. And now I can kind of shift back into like maintenance mode or like mm. just getting back to my, getting back to my basics. That almost reminds you of like what Tony Robbins says about taking massive action to make it change your life. Like to do something like almost like a hard reset to do an insane amount of work in a short period of time or do something that you are not used to doing. So you kind of reset your, your mental capacity of what you think you can do so that when you're done that you're like, well, I can do a lot more than what I thought I could. So like you're, you're almost like turning up the thermostat a little bit mm -hmm. and you're, you're setting your standard up higher because I think we're we, I think even my, I mean, I, 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 at the end of the day, I'm like, Oh man, I, I know I could have done more here or more in this area of my business or more with my clients and uh, it's great to set expectations, but also know what we're able to do and be as functional. And that's why I look up to you because you work with high performers, with entrepreneurs, with business owners, and you help them excel even throughout their chaotic lives, help them find simplicity with nutrition and exercise. And you know, as we wrap up this episode, Nate, I'd love, to, I'd love for you to just give us maybe a few words of advice that you'd like to leave our, our audience with today about nutrition, about fat loss, uh, about the holidays, anything you want to give our audience that is on your heart, on your mind today that would, that, uh, that you would uh, want to share with us. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for the, thank you for the opportunity. And it's been really fun to, to chat with you. The one thing I'd love to like leave everyone who's listening right now with is not necessarily like a tactic. There's a lot of tactics out there. Like Garrett, you're amazing at what you do. You're an incredible coach. You help so many people. And so like, I know if someone's coming to you and they're like, Hey, I need help with Thanksgiving. You're going to be able to give them very specific measurable actions that they can take. So I don't want to like, I don't want to say like, Hey, why do you just, you know, eat more celery? You know, like, I don't think that serves anyone. So I think that at the end of the day, what we need to be really like thinking about and being focused on is the fact that if you don't quit, if you don't stop, then you cannot lose. Your victory is already assured. It is a given that you're going to win here. And the only thing you need to do is put one foot in front of the other. Just keep going. So you do that seven day bender. You have, you, you drink 17 gallons of eggnog in two weeks. It doesn't matter. Keep going. You didn't blow it. You didn't ruin everything. You're not off the wagon. You need to put one foot in front of the other and keep walking forward because at the end of the day, if you don't stop moving forward, you will not lose at this game. And that's fitness. That's business. That's relationships. That's life. You know, consistency trumps intensity every single time. So that's one thing I would love to just like just hammer home is that you're, you didn't do it wrong. You didn't screw up. Keep going. That is so powerful. Nate, man, that is amazing. I love that advice. And actually, I read something very similar to today in Brendan Bouchard's, uh, I'm reading his book, High Performance Habits. And he said, he said exactly that. And that should, uh, that is, that, that is just so powerful. I'm so glad that it's so simple too, but I don't think maybe you'll realize the power and potential it has to keep going even if you feel like all is lost, right? And to, to, to get up after you feel like you've given up because the only way to quit is to stop trying. And so I love the attitude. I love your, uh, your perception on that. And just that advice in general is just so fantastic. And, and Nate, I want everyone listening to this podcast, either live on replay uh, or, and even on our podcast platforms to, to, to know where to find you, you know, buy your books, uh, look at your website. Where can they find to learn more about you? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, so right now I'm doing a promotion where I'm giving away like free PDFs of the book in my million dollar body community. You can track that down by going to n8trainingsystems.com slash group. Otherwise it's on Amazon. You can find the, you can get a hard copy ebook, whatever else. And then if you want to stalk me on social medias at n8training, we'll get you there in most places, except for maybe like MySpace. 
<laughs> Boom. Well, Nate, it's been a pleasure, brother. Thank you so much for coming on coming on as a guest uh, on our podcast. I know that I learned a lot, and I this is one of those episodes that I'm going to go back and rewatch and uh, really kind of write down the tricks and strategies that you gave us today. So thank you so much, man. Really appreciate you coming on, and I hope to have you on again in the future again. Dude, this is a lot of fun, Garrett. You're awesome. Awesome to talk with. I always appreciate our conversations. Have a great rest of your day. You too, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Tandem Talk Show. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.